means that um, H tilde in K L minus one X is actually equal to minus the sum Y equals X zero minus L plus one plus one to X H tilde in K L Y. Okay, sorry about this long equations, there's not much I can do about it. But you see, because you have this difference, and you know that it's zero on the boundary, you can just sum from the boundary to your point, and, and you get your function. That's easy enough. But what that means is that if this thing, is this right? Yeah, L minus one. So if this thing is a polynomial of degree k minus l, then this thing's a polynomial of degree k minus l plus 1. Okay. And at k, it's obvious the thing is a polynomial of degree 0 degree one, one, zero, of degree zero, right? So they just increase by degree each time you go back, which is exactly what was asked. Okay, so they're polynomials, that, that proves two. So now we have to prove one. Okay, so this is a really fun, okay. We have sum over z, psi, psi n uh, l, said phi and hmm, I think I should be a K. K Z so, equals the sum. Oh, by, by the way, I, I said it proves uh, I'm sorry. I said it proves uh, two, but it, it proves that uh, that this guy's a polynomial of the right degree. But then this is just a convolution with um, shifts of the thing. So, of course, that becomes a polynomial of the same degree. It's, that's easy to see. Okay, so that proves the act that these guys are actually polynomials of the right degree. Okay, let's write this thing. not enough room on these boards to write these formulas. So H, K, N, zero. This is a continuation of, of that's a product. R, T, minus one, Z, two, Z. Okay, so, you, so I just wrote it out. You get, you get this sum, okay? But now you've got R, T, you, you, you've got this sum and you could put the sum first, on, you could do the fun, sum first on the, on the z's, okay? You do the sum on the z's, there's RT, RT inverse. So that just becomes an identity. And that means that z1 is equal to z2. So this thing is equal to the sum over z of q to the minus l, z, x0, n minus l, h, k, n, 0, z. But that's actually just a way of writing Q star minus L acting on H. Okay? But what does Q star do to H? It shifts it around in the L's. So this is H, K, N of L. And then you just evaluate at X, 0, and minus L. And lo and behold, it's told you to evaluate it on the curve, x0, at L, but that's only equal to 1 when L is k. Okay. So now we found the fees. And it's 
always true, no matter what. Now you can see why to get a closed form formula for this might be a little bit tricky. You see, if you want a formula for something, you have to be able to calculate the hitting probability of a geometric walk to that curve, right? If you want an exact formula. If the curve is just linear, particle, whole, whole, particle, whole, whole, then it just goes up like that. And we all know how to calculate the probability of a Brownian motion to a, to a line. And it works also for geometric random walks. Same tricks. It's actually beautiful because the amount you jump over because of the memoryless property of geometrics, it just forgets that. So it's just perfect. So you can calculate probabilities to, to lines. But this thing would ask you to calculate the probability that you go hit a staircase. So it's obviously it's not going to be a nice formula. Okay. Okay. So let me just write out the conclusion. KTN. Oh, this is the one point, that's all we needed, is RT, this funny RT on the sides, Q to the minus N, G, zero, N, RT inverse, where G, zero, N, sub one, sub two, equals, um, Probability that B star minus one is equal to about two tau zero n is less than n B star n minus one equals one. <laughs> Where tau zero n is just the first time you hit the curve between minus one and then minus one. I'm sorry, it comes out a slightly awkward enough. Okay. But this isn't actually uh, this isn't actually true. <laughs> this is only true for below the curve. Above the curve, it's some sort of analytic extension of that. I want to write it a slightly different way. So this, this formula actually only holds below the curve, but I want to write it everywhere. And when you try to write it everywhere, you find out it's this. So for all of that.
things start to look familiar. Where? Actually, I should call this sort of script S. Let me, let me write a double. <laughs> it's, it's not the same S as before. It's, it's the microscopic S. So this script S. <laughs> minus T. Is equal to E to the minus T over 2. This R, I'm just writing it out. And this Q minus N. And Q bar is an analytic extension of Q. If you like, these things are given by contour integrals, but uh, perhaps I won't write the contour integral down. And epi, that's bar epi, x0, minus t, and is just the expectation, b0. Now, now these are geometric walks instead of, instead of Brownian motions of uh, this s bar minus t and minus tau, b tau, set to indicate a function for tau is less than n. So now it has to hit before time n. Okay. And so that's the, um, the solution of TASEP. So the, so the theorem, the theorem sort of written in different pieces here. This holds with that kernel for any uh, right finite initial data. Okay. One can also write formulas for not right finite initial data, but they're a little bit more cumbersome. It somehow it wants to be written like this. I'm not sure why. And of course, if you've, if you've got some special case where you can compute the hitting time to occur, for example, the periodic, you just compute it, you can calculate the S epi explicitly, and it's just exactly the formulas you, they had before. Okay, yeah. That's easy. Well, because you're trying to hit the curve x0. So particle, whole, whole, particle, whole, whole. That just means that x0 is 3 minus 3i. Three so you're trying to hit the curve minus, <laughs> I can't draw anything for the life of me. You're trying to hit the curve minus 3i. That's, that's really of course, it's just, it's just, the other one is a little staircase. So it's not surprising you don't have exact formula. But of course, everything we do is soft, so the, of course the staircase gets proved by just linking it to the other guys, right? So you won't, so for example, for the staircase, you will not have a completely explicit formula here. It'll be mildly inexplicit in terms of hitting times of the staircase. When you pass to the KPZ limit, it doesn't care if you had a little staircase or if you had a straight guy. They're all flat, okay? Does it make sense? Um, I should just add a word. Um, 
because I, I want to show you, I have 15 minutes, so I want to show you a little bit of the scaling. I said I would do the one, two, three scaling today, so I'll try to do that. Um, uh, that uh, while, while this is true, it's not actually true that um, these Ks, in this case, are trace class operators, but there is a conjugation to make them trace class operators. And that's enough to make the, the sense of the Fredholm determinant, because the Fredholm determinant is invariant under conjugations. So if you can conjugate to a trace class operator, that's fine. Okay? It means that the this, this space may actually not be exactly L2, but it's something a little bit different. Uh, and um, this R is a typo, of course, that's Z. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now we want to take the one, two, three scaling limit of this thing. And I just want to show you how remarkably easy it is. Once, you, once things are written in this form, so we'll take the density is about a half. And then we know that we should rescale h epsilon tx. We know from the first lecture, epsilon to 1 half, h2 epsilon to the minus 3 halves t, uh, epsilon to the minus one, 2 epsilon to the minus 1 x, plus epsilon to the minus 3 halves t. And this thing is supposed to go to the KBZ fixed point as long as initially the functions converge to some function. OK? So you set things up so that h epsilon 0x, that this is you, you take your TASEP height profile and you, and you produce h epsilon, and you set it up, initial condition, so that h epsilon 0x converges to some uh, upper semi-continuous function in the Hausdorff topology I talked about. Okay? Now, ht z, as I said before, is basically just the inverse of xt. Minus 1, z minus 1, oh, minus x0 inverse minus 1, minus z. Okay? So it's basically the same thing as the inverse of x0. And so the probability that this function is less than or equal to something just gets translated into the probability that x0 of, okay, it's a little bit complicated, but it's not anything difficult. So it'll just take me a second to write. A half epsilon to the minus 3 halves t minus epsilon to the minus 1 x minus 1 half, epsilon to the minus 1 half ai plus 1 is greater than 2 epsilon to the minus 1 x minus 2 <laughs> i equals 1 to m. And that tells you the probability that h was less than these ai's at, at, at the appropriate points. Okay. So you wanted to know that h t x i is less than or equal to a i, and it just translates into this. Okay, so we can call this number n, and we just have to do some rescaling of our of our um, formula. Okay. Here's the formula. Let's take, for example, this guy here. We want to rescale him. Okay. So when you untranslate through this whole thing, you want to take a limit. So, so you're trying to take a limit. So you take a limit of this and a limit of this, right? I'm basically going to show you how to take a limit of this, and then you'll, you'll see the rest. OK. So when you translate, you get epsilon minus a half s minus epsilon to a minus 3 halves t. This is the microscopic s. Minus a half, minus a half, one half. Of course, the numbers are all crazy things. It takes a while to get them straight. <laughs> okay, 
So that's the, that's the new T and that's the new N. Uh, and I think I, I think I dropped A, but it doesn't matter. You'll, you'll see that these are not here. Um, of course, I mean, you can just write X plus epsilon to the one half A, so it doesn't make any difference. Okay. Okay, and now the S has variables, and of course, in a, in a, when you take a limit of friend holder determinants, you may have to shift the variables. You may have to do conjugations to get the thing to come out right, and here you have to do a little shift. So we have to evaluate, uh, first of all, the, the lattice size is this, but actually you have to shift to epsilon minus one, x plus epsilon to the minus a half u, and, and that's allowed because, um, because of conjugation. Okay. All right, so we want to take a limit of this. <laughs> and it may look, you may think this looks very imposing, but actually the, the limit is like, is like butter. Because this is just this. And Q inverse, I have a formula for it. So this is just E to the minus epsilon to the minus 3 halves T over 2 times minus a half grad minus plus. OK, now the, now the Q to the minus 1. Q to the minus 1 was 1 plus 2 grad plus, right? And I said it had the kernel, but that kernel is actually not in L2, so you don't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to write that as e to the log. And you might think, well, that's not quite allowed because grad plus is an operator bounded by 1. But we're on a lattice of size epsilon, so actually grad plus is size epsilon to the lattice of size epsilon to the 1 half. So, we're, um, so, so, so grad plus is an operator of size epsilon to the 1 half, so that's OK, actually. So plus 1 quarter log. 1 plus 2 grad plus. So just remember that's of order epsilon 1 half. Uh, and then, um, okay, so we've got that. And then actually I want to separate out the epsilon to the minus 1x here and write this as q star um, epsilon to the minus 1x. Okay, that's what you get. And I didn't write it inside the variables. Fair enough? OK. Now, now, this guy here, this guy's being evaluated at this point here, right? And that's actually the mean of this random walk Q star. So you won't be very surprised to know that this thing goes to e to the x d squared. Well, that's OK if x is positive. If x is negative, then you have to pull some more stuff into the other guy and, then, and, and pay for it later. That's OK. So this is actually very easy. That's just the, that is just the standard convergence of random walks properly recentered to Brownian motions. OK? But what about this thing? OK, so here's, here's the black magic. I have minus 1 half grad minus. And now I'll just expand the log. And remember, we're on a lattice of size epsilon 1 half. So grads are size epsilon 1 half. One quarter times two grad plus. Plus one quarter times one third times two grad plus cubed. This is just expansion of the log. Plus. And now the next term is going to be order epsilon 1 half to the 4, so it's order epsilon squared. That's what's inside here. Fair enough? But now, this thing is completely amazing. We've got minus grad minus plus the same 1 half grad plus. So that's a Laplacian. Okay? Does everyone see that? That's a discrete Laplace operator. But grad plus, sorry. <laughs> oh, I, I dropped, I, I dropped a term, sorry. There's a, there's a, ah, sorry. 
plus minus one quarter times one half of two grad plus squared. And then this thing is like cubed. Sorry, um, I just want to see if that's correct. It, it really matters. Okay, good. Sorry. Okay, now it's correct. It, I hope. I hope you can all expand the log for me and just tell me if I made a mistake here. I'm pretty sure this is correct. Okay. So this and this is a Laplacian, a standard centered Laplace operator. But if you take grad plus squared, it's actually a Laplace operator also, but it's shifted by one, right? Because it evaluates at, at two minus two times one plus, whatever. okay. So you get this, Laplace operator minus this Laplace operator, which is a difference of Laplace operators, which is a third derivative, plus a third derivative. So the whole thing, after a little bit of computation, and you've got this epsilon to the minus 3 halves times the size epsilon 1 half, this thing is e to the t over 3 d cubed. And why <laughs> would the third derivative come up in a probability problem? I have no idea. So you see the S's just converge to this S operators, which I wrote, uh, well, they're erased. The S's just converge in a few seconds to the S operators in the continuum. And now, the epi operator, well, the epi operator is just evaluating random walk paths of these S's, and it's not too hard to imagine that um, the uh, Brownian motions, the random walks are just converging to Brownian motions, hitting the rescaled x0 path, which just turns out to be minus the height function, because x0 is the inverse of h. So the perturbed inverse gives you a minus sign. Okay? And so that gives you the KPZ fixed point formula. So let me just, I got, should, maybe I'll just say it. So what you check is that the limiting guys also under a conjugation are trace class. And the map um, from initial data in UC, remember UC is upper semi-continuous functions with this local Hausdorff topology, and it turns out they have to be bounded by, by, um, by linear and infinity. And G in LC, which is just minus UC, to, um, to these operators, K, is a, the operator K hypo F minus T over two, K epi G, over two, or I might have a minus on that, it, it doesn't matter. Um, that this map um, is actually a, a continuous map in, um, in trace class. And that means you can pass to the limit. So in other words, if you've set up your initial data so that H0x converges in UC to a later profile, then the, at time t later, um, the whole thing converges again to the KBZ fixed point, okay? So it's that, it's that soft. Um, there's one little twist to this, which I haven't gotten to, and I'll just explain in words. We started with right finite initial data. So when we get to the KBZ fixed point, we had a KPZ fixed point, which the initial data has to be zero past a per, sorry, minus infinity after a certain point to the right, okay? So everything I've written is only proved so far for initial data for the KPZ fixed point, which is minus infinity to the right of, well, zero, but it doesn't matter because of translation invariance, so it just has to be to the right of some point. Does that make sense? But now you can check, because you have exact formulas, you can check how much it matters out there. There's a worst case scenario, which is you just start with something which is growing linearly at infinity. 
And then there's the other worst case scenario, which is you have minus infinity infinity. And you can check that the difference, if you're at, at minus L and you cut off, is actually like e to the minus L cubed. Uniformly in the limit as you take the uh, TASEP under the 1, 2, 3 scaling to the KBZ fixed point. So that means it's very easy to remove that and you get the convergence for anything. Okay? And so that's, so that's the theory. I'll stop there.